Good morning, everyone. Good morning once again. Thank you, my sister. Thank you for that warm welcome. I want to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, I have a topic I want to bring to you, and it, it's nothing but God. Trust me, it's nothing but God. All the songs that were played today, all that the prayers that I heard at the, what was that, four o'clock hour, had to do with our topic tonight, this morning, and it is, my brokenness is still valuable. My brokenness is still valuable. And I want you to let that roll around in your head for just a moment. Many people come because they're broken. Many people come because they're carrying burdens from way back when. And the last song he said, uh, if he could carry the weight of this world, I know he can carry my stuff. So our message this morning is my brokenness is still valuable. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Let me say that again. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. God is close to you if you feel broken right now. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Find that in Psalms 34, 18. But I want you to know today, your brokenness is still valuable. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the morning. We thank you, oh God, for waking us up to see another day, a day we've never seen before. So Lord, your blessings are me and your release from brokenness is ready to be released. So this morning, God, I ask now that you will go to every house, go to every individual, and Lord, I want you to touch them like you've never touched them before. Because Lord, our brokenness is still valuable to you. And you be praised in all that we do, in all that we say, in Jesus' name, amen. My brokenness is still valuable. My brokenness is still valuable. And I want you to think about this. Have you ever seen a crayon, a crayon, long crayon, kids color with it? What happens when that crayon breaks? Do you throw the crayon away? Nope. Because even though the crayon has been broken, it can still color. You miss your shout right there. I don't care how broken you are. I came to tell you this morning that God can still use you even in your brokenness. Why? Because we go through things to grow through things. See, we go through things to grow through things. An underlying feeling a brokenness has plagued many, if not most, people throughout their lives. And in a world that considers broken things to be no value, struggles with the reality of broken bodies, with the reality of broken minds, with the reality of broken relationships. 
and broken lives can feel utterly useless. But I stopped by this morning to tell you that God, even in your brokenness, has a plan for your life. We talked about that the other morning. Jeremiah 29, 11. You have thoughts that, don't you know I have thoughts for you? I have something for you to do. Even in the midst. See, you got to grab hold of that thing. Because you said, why me, God? Why am I going through this? Lord said, why not you? Birds eat worms, don't they? And I have prepared you for such a time as this. Your brokenness is still valuable to God. We need to understand that we are indeed imperfect people living in a broken world. But even so, God takes great delight in us, rejoicing over us with singing. Zechariah, no, Zephaniah, I'm sorry, Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Remember the other night, the other morning, I told you that when you read his word, Whatever you're reading it for, the promise is already in the verse. The only thing you have to do is pick it up, read it, digest it, read it again, digest it, read it again, and you will begin to get the flavor. You'll begin to get the kernels. You'll begin to get the aroma that God wants you to know. We may not understand why brokenness exists in our lives, but we can hold on to the promise that he will work all things for his good. Now, you know where that's found, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of them who are doing what, who are called. See, God has a calling on your life. He has a calling on my life. And like Jonah, many of us try to run away what, from God and what he tried to do for us. Many of you go through your day. God is speaking to you, but you act or you have what we call selective listening and selective doing. See, Brokenness is a destination for some people. It's not the end of the journey. See, at some stage in our life, we feel broken. You may have spoke out of turn. You may have done something that you really in your heart knew was not right to do. And you felt bad about it. But like so many people, we don't open our mouths up and we don't say anything about what we're going through. And because we are talking to ourselves, we are answering ourselves. If I were you, I wouldn't share that. If I were you, I wouldn't do that. If I were you, and you go through this litany of if I were you. Lord says, I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. He said, bring that stuff to me. Bring your brokenness to me. Bring your tiredness to me. And I will give you rest. See, I found this out a long time ago. That we don't want to take it to God. Because some of us don't want to give up what the brokenness has been. That brokenness has become a badge of honor. 
That brokenness has become our pedigree. That brokenness is what we put on every day, like we put our shirt and our pants and our coats on. And how dare you try to take my brokenness away? Some people are satisfied with brokenness. Some people are satisfied with depression. Some people are satisfied feeling, whoa, whoa, whoa is me. Because the Bible says, True love casts out fear, doesn't it? Not? The Bible says, ask anything in my name, believing you shall receive it. But the problem is, we ask, but we don't believe. We ask, but it didn't come when I wanted it. We ask, so I then make up in my mind, how oh, God don't care for me doesn't care. But that's not true. Now, that does not mean all things will feel good. Mm -mm. Not everything you go through, not everything you grow through is going to feel good. See, it's like pruning a tree. The Pine Forge Academy, where I went to high school, a Christian academy in Pennsylvania, every October, we, had, we closed school and all the students went out to the apple orchard, beautiful apple orchard at Pine Forge Academy. And so I remember Mr. Poole, Mr. Shipman, they would take us out in the field and they would give us these pruning shears. And he said, now this is how, they would show us first, this is how we need you to prune the tree, because in pruning the tree, it's going to yield a greater harvest. Now, you got to understand, you got kids from the inner city. You got kids from the country. A lot of kids didn't understand what was going on. I was one of those. And I thought when I cut that tree, I really hurt that tree. But Mr. Poole said to me, he said, Cliff, you are hurting the tree. But in hurting the tree, the tree becomes better. Wow, that didn't make sense. In hurting the tree, mm, the tree becomes better. Huh? He said, Cliff, just keep pruning the tree. You'll see. So that year I pruned the tree. But when the apples came, there were so many apples on the limb, on the vine, on the tree, until only thing we had to do, we didn't have to pull them, we just shook and they fell. See, if you keep trusting God when you can't trace him, what happens is the moment you're about to give up is when your blessing is released. Because remember, I told you, you're going through it to grow through it. So in brokenness, think about Paul. We've examined Paul over and over and over again. And in Paul's affliction, he asked God, please take this thorn out of my flesh. And he kept pleading, like many of us, we plead. But God keeps saying to Paul, he kept on saying, no. No. But Paul kept saying, why? But he, after he said, why? One last time he says, okay. He is assured that Christ's grace ah, is sufficient. Don't care what I'm going through. God's grace is going to heal my brokenness. God's grace is going to give me a pep in my step. God's grace is going to open doors where there's unemployment. He's going to open doors. Where there's grace, God is going to do abundantly more than you or I even expect. Why? Because huh. we serve an awesome God. Remember, he created us. 
Remember, he knows everything about us. And so many people begin to say, well, if God knows so much, why am I going through so much? Hmm. If you weren't going through it, would you be happy? If you weren't going through it, what did Edwin Hawkins say in the song? If I never had a problem, how would I know if God could solve it? If I never went through a dark moment, how will I know that God would bring me out? See, I got to trust God when I can't trace it because my brokenness is still valuable to the God we serve. And I want you to know, I really want you to know, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good. That means God will weave our brokenness together in such a way that the result of the outcome will not only be felt in your life, but in the lives of others that you will minister to. Do you understand? There are people looking at you even though you're broken and they know that you serve a living God. And they're watching you as you walk out of your house, as you go to work, as you do the things, because there's something about you that's different. And my wife and I, we experienced that. One Sabbath, we back, I backed the car out of the driveway. My wife was in the car. Son was in the car. We're on our way to church. My wife says, oh, Cliff, I forgot something. I said, Okay. Let me get out, open the door. See, that's what Pine Forge men do. We open the doors for our wives and our girls. Why? Because God made them special. So I went to, she said, no, no, no. We're running behind. I will run out. I will get it. So she jumps out of the car, runs into the house, comes back, jumps in. We take off and go on about our business to church. So Sabbath being Sabbath, the next day I'm out cutting my lawn. My neighbor across the street says to me, hey, Cliff, can I speak to you, please? So I said, okay. Mm. Stop the more. Walked over. Yeah, I said, what's going on? He said, Cliff, Sabrina and I are a little concerned. And I looked at him. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, Sabrina and I are a little concerned. I said, a little concerned about what? He said, Cliff, we saw you do something that you had never done since we lived on this block. Now, I'm puzzled. I don't know what this man talking about. He said, yesterday, we know that y'all go to church on Sabbath. That's okay. But I noticed that you did not get out of the car and opened the door for your wife. And my wife was horrified. Huh? And I started laughing. And I said, no, 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 Sam. No, no, that's not what happened. What happened was, and when I explained it, he said, ooh, okay. Because we see you two as lights in the community. Even in your brokenness, y'all. And we weren't going through anything at that time. But my point is, people are watching you. Even in your brokenness, they watch you. Why? Because you say you serve a risen God who's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I don't care we serve a God who cares for you. We serve a God who understands brokenness. Why? Because he'll take those broken pieces and he will put them back together again. Not like Humpty Dumpty, but God, when he puts you back together, 
when you allow him to put you back together, when you surrender your brokenness to him, watch what he does. Watch what he does. Why? Because if you don't know this, well, let me be the first to tell you. We are a last day people. I don't care what you say. The Lord is soon to come. And he will take broken folk over happy folk. So long as you're worshiping him and giving him the glory. Give him the glory. Praise him through your brokenness. Let him release from your life those things that has been holding you back. Trust God when you cannot trace him. Trust him when you cannot trace him. The promise, the promise I want to leave with you is Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the broken hearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Release yourself today. Release yourself and let God do what only God can do. Let us pray. Father God, thank you again for the assurance even in our brokenness, we're valuable to you. Why, oh God? Because all this is to give you glory. Huh? All of what we go through is to give you praise. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, go to every home, go to every individual. Go to every broken spirit. Go to every crushed spirit. Go, oh God, and do what only you can. Huh. And that is save us. Why? Because we can't save ourselves. And we'll be so careful, oh God, to give your name the praise, the honor, and shown up the glory. We thank you for allowing those two twins called grace and mercy to walk with us. Let them keep walking with us, even in our brokenness. We thank you now, Jesus. We thank you now, great Father. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, and what you're going to do for everybody in this window today. We pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen again. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much.